Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another 60 Seconds Challenge video. And this challenge is the Yes Challenge. And I have done the Yes Challenge before, but in honor of that challenge reaching over a million views, which is insane, I'm gonna take on the challenge again. Because I didn't pass the Yes Challenge, I have never completed it before. This is my fourth time doing it. And the reason why I haven't passed it is because the last time I did the Yes Challenge, this happened. What we initially thought was thunder, turn out to be heavy knocking on the door. Someone either hates that door or is very determined to have someone answer it. Should we open the door? Please, please be the military, please. Come on. Oh, what? Oh my God. Oh my God. We opened the door expecting friendly faces. Instead, we were beaten, tied up, and forced to watch a band of raiders plunder our home. If there was ever a time when we thought of our shelter as home, it was right then. All of our supplies were plundered. Nothing was left behind, save for a few damaged items. We don't know how we're going to survive. Fucked up, right? Yeah, they raided my whole shit. I hope that doesn't happen again. We have to say yes to everything. If you guys don't know how this challenge goes, I just have to use my skills to pay the motherfucking bills and complete the game. But the only thing is... I have to say yes to every single scenario that comes up. I can never say no to anything. Somebody could say, I want you to pull your pants down and I'm going to spank you with a broom with nails on it and I have to say yes about that. But I can click on any item that I want to get because there is no limit on that. I just need to use my skills to try to make it out alive and complete this whole thing. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let me grab some of these good items. Get the water. It only takes one. What the fuck? Oh my god, that killed me! Fuck. Okay, since that killed me, I am not getting Mary Jane. Screw that. That's some bullshit. Let's get Timmy. Let's get one food. I need to get a lot of food. But actually, I don't really need to get a lot of food because I'm gonna be scavenging a lot. I'm gonna be making a lot of things happen. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, no, I'm not gonna get you. Let's do... What the fuck is going on? All right, sorry guys, I had to redo that because something was messing up on this game. Like, I couldn't move for some reason. I was, like, stuck in, like, some kind of barrier. But I know exactly what I want to get. So, we're going to grab these items. Definitely got to get the Boy Scout book. If you guys are playing this game and you're trying to figure out what's the best item I can get, the Boy Scout book is probably number one on everybody's list that has played this game that knows how to, you know, escape in this game. Because, um, without that... You're pretty much... Well, you're not screwed. You're definitely not screwed because I've beaten the challenges and I've beaten this game without the Boy Scout book before. But it's definitely going to be harder because the Boy Scout book repairs a lot of damaged items. And trust me, you will get damaged items in this game. It's inevitable. You can't even avoid it. Like, I bet you in the first five days of this specific challenge, I'm going to have something break and there's nothing I can do about it. Get that. And that. What else am I missing? What's that? Oh shit, one more water! Come on, fuck! Go, 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 go! Woo! Kobe. Okay, we clutched it, cause we nasty. Let the yes challenge for the fourth time begin. Day one, son. I'm hyped up. Ted has no chin pubes on his face. Dolores got resting bitch face. Timmy got curious little fuckboy face. And our shelter isn't that bad looking. Feed them every five days and give them water every five days. Not gonna read the random notes because a lot of people ask me, Jay, why don't you read the random notes? What's the problem, Jay? Well, if you really want me to read the random notes, check like my first three videos on 60 Seconds and you guys will know what the notes are all about and it's not worth reading. But let's see what it says here. We felt like something was staring at us from the corner of the shelter. We think it's a rat. At least it looks like a rat. A rat on a very good diet. We decided we need to do something about it or to put it more bluntly, it's either him or us. Okay, with these things where it's like a multiple choice one we choose the first one that is there so if this one is crossed out then we choose that one and then if there's a third option if this was crossed out we choose the third one hopefully that makes sense to you guys if you're watching this challenge for the first time but we're gonna choose the axe and that is exactly the type of weapon you need to use in this scenario because i believe if you use the gun it's gonna be jumping all over the place and then you can't kill it but with the axe it's a direct hit whatever it was it's dead now quite dead maybe there's more hiding somewhere in those nasty little holes how about getting Timmy something to drink? Water's all Dolores wants. All Ted wishes for are a few drops of Wata. Two more days and you guys are good to go. But with the scavenging part, 
I don't need to choose Ted just because he's the first guy. I can pick whoever I want. The rules don't apply to the family members, but just for the sake of the challenge, I'll choose Teddy Boy first. And he is going to get the gas mask because the area is still contaminated. We're going to clasp our hands and good luck, Ted. It is now day five. Time to get him some soup and some of that. What's up? And we've been smelling something funny in the shelter ever since we woke up. Timmy and Dolores, close both your legs. Sure enough, there was something. Something or someone started a fire. And it's already spreading. We can't save everything. What do we save from the flames? Holy shit, though. A med kit, a radio, and a Boy Scout book. <laughs> the three most valuable items in the shelter. I have to save the med kit? Oh my god, you might as well bend me over, pull my pants down, spread the cheeks, and just say you're <laughs> And we lost the Boy Scout book in the radio. whoop de freaking do We have the most curious visitors today. One of them was making the sound of a galloping horse using a pair of rocks and hitting them against each other, while his companion was pretending to ride his horse. They claimed to be on a very important quest to seek some magical cup. Only those threw away in the wasteland. They asked permission to take a quick look at our map to determine their whereabouts. Alright, so you can have your map. And why is horse in quotation marks? What is he riding then? Do we even want to know? I don't want to know what he's riding. A guy should not be riding anything that is not a mobile vehicle. They seem friendly enough, so we let them have a look at our map. They thanked us and offered us some supplies in exchange. We graciously accepted and wished them luck on their quest. And we got a deck of cards? Oh, how nice of you guys. Deck of cards, that's all I ever wanted. And as long as we have food and water, we can stay locked in, but we'll have to leave eventually. That is a radio situation, but whoever started the fire killed our radio. So thank you. Day 9. As we were about to start a book club discussion on the only book we've all read, the phone book, we were interrupted by rapid knocking at the door. We found out it was a group of refugees who survived the blast just like we did. They were doing much worse than us and begged us to provide them with any water, food, or medical supplies we could spare. And look at what the first option is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the definition of you're fucked. Because I gotta give them the med kit instead of some food and water. And yeah, enjoy your med kit, guys. Hopefully they give us some good stuff, though. Because I have never in my life given them a med kit. So let's see what they gave us. And it says, our visitors were in tears when we gave them what they asked for. We survived the nuclear apocalypse only to be nearly strangled by thankful refugees. Hugs can kill, you know. Luckily for us, they decided to continue their journey to get somewhere safe before the sunset. As we were about to leave, one of them presented us with a portable radio. They would not let us take no for an answer and soon left, waving goodbye until they disappeared amongst the rubble. So that was good. We traded the med kit. We got a radio, which is very valuable. So now we just need to make sure nobody gets sick, injured, or crazy. And we'll be A-okay. And Ted's back, by the way. Brought back one soup, one wata, and dash about it. So let's give him some of that. We're gonna prepare to scavenge again. And more random notes. And this right here is actually the exact face I made when I gave them the med kit. It is now time to scavenge. So we're gonna send out Dolores and give her the gas mask. Because we don't know if it's still contaminated outside. She could come back and become a ghoul for all we know. Day 13. We've been hearing strange noises lately. Is it coming from the outside or is it something that came into the shelter with us? Could it be? We found nothing. We feel like we might be going crazy. We should probably get busy with something to keep us occupied before this gets worse. Okay, we need to use the cards. Usually when I'm bored and I want to preoccupy myself, I just go on dirty websites and never mind. You guys don't even want to know what I do. Day 14. We can keep sitting on our backsides here in this tiny little bunker, or we can start thinking about getting away as far as possible from this radioactive wasteland. Yes! Let's get in contact with the military, and hopefully we can get that ending as soon as possible. With the yes challenge, there is no limit. Like, you don't have to survive, like, 69 days or a thousand days. All you have to do is get rescued as easy as you can, like, as easy and safe as you can, and you have to say yes to everything. But it is the military, and they're coming to save us. We just need to follow instructions, and they should contact us shortly. So let's give them some of this. And more random notes. Where is Dolores? It's been a couple days now, and I'm worried about you, baby girl. Day 17. During the night, we heard some suspicious sounds coming from behind our door. When we peeked out in the morning, we saw a leather suitcase. It has no address or name on it, but we're pretty sure it's meant for us. Should we open it? Oh boy. Okay. From playing this game for a very long time, I know that the suitcase is either a booby trap, radioactive water, or normal water. And judging by Ted's fuckboy greenish snot dripping face, it wasn't good. 
Inside the suitcase, we found some soup, but yuck! It expired a long time ago! We're not feeling very well. Some of us spend the whole morning using the bucket in the corner. We're not accepting anonymous gifts ever again! Unless another suitcase situation pops up, then yes, we are gonna have to accept anonymous suitcases again. We're glad to see Dolores come back safely from the wasteland. She brought back the gas mask. That is very good. Two soups. Two waters. A suitcase. Not bad. Okay, okay. Um, I'm not gonna feed her yet. We had thought phone calls were a thing of the past after the atomic bomb obliterated everything in our little town. However, a phone booth on our street survived the bombing somehow. It seems it's ringing right now. We should send someone to answer it. Okay, Ted, you're up! Hopefully you answered that call and your nose and stuff, you're like... Hello? No, no, I'm not infected by radioactive stuff. Yeah, tell you're from Hill Valley. Uh, er, thanks. All right, sorry guys, I got too into that. I got way too into that one. When we answered the phone, we heard a gasp of relief from the caller. They introduced themselves as survivors from a nearby town of Hill Valley. We exchange info and they will get back to us shortly. Yes, it's the beginning of the twin ending and it's only day 19. So we can potentially get the military ending or the twin ending as fast as possible. It's only day 19, I have hope. Let's prepare to scavenge. And our supplies are scarce and the morale is low. You can almost smell the desperation in the shelter. We're pretty sure there's a small group of survivors nearby, mostly old folks from the retirement home. It shouldn't be hard to borrow some of their supplies. They're old anyway and we need them more, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Damn it. I wholeheartedly believe that karma plays a big part in getting a good ending in this game. I don't think the twins are going to rescue us because we killed these old people. But we got a Boy Scout book! So fuck those old people! Fuck them to hell! They had a little bit of time left anyway. We did them a favor. We did what the Grim Reaper was going to do. We got a freaking Boy Scout book. I would kill more people for more Boy Scout books. So let's give them some water and some food. Damn, that made me happy. That made me change my whole attitude like a complete 180. Let's send out Timmy this time. Like I said, sending people out doesn't apply to the first option rule. So we're going to send out Timmy. He's going to bring a suitcase. There you go. And a gas mask. And an axe. Because raiders might try to fuck with him because he has orange hair. But he's going to be like, hell no. Today during breakfast, we were startled when our map slid off the wall. We checked the nails holding it, but they are all firmly in place. It could be a poltergeist. Maybe we need to perform an exorcism to get rid of it. Anyway, in the wall behind the map, we discovered some sort of safe. We're curious as to what treasure might be inside. Should we open it? Yes! Hell yeah! I love these safe scenarios because it's never anything bad. It's always something good. And what did we get? We got one soup! Man, wasn't even that good. Whatever. More random notes. Day 24. We were able to receive another message from the government. The military is preparing a rescue mission. They want all survivors to head to a specific location in the area, then leave a sign that someone is still alive and kicking nearby. The problem is, they provided us with geographical coordinates, but we need a map to find out where we're supposed to be headed. Otherwise, it's just complete gobbledygook. Yes, use the map so you don't have to deal with all that gobbledygook. Don't even know what the exact definition of gobbledygook even means, but I love that word. I would name my firstborn child gobbledygook. And we got an axe. Oh, that's Timmy. He brought back the axe. Okay, thank you, Timmy. And he brought back one soup, one water, lost a gas mask, and a suitcase, just like a fuckboy would. Why am I not even surprised? So let's give them some of this. Prepare to scavenge. And what was that? A rat? Rats are usually smaller than cats. And what's with the double tail? We can't let that thing get to our supplies! Use the axe and problemo solved. I'm now gonna send out Ted to scavenge. If he dies, it's whatever. I'm not gonna give him any supplies. He already looks sick as hell anyway. So if he doesn't come back, then it's Team Ginger all the way with Dolores and Timmy, even though they look pretty sad. But it's okay, we're gonna get rescued soon. I promise. I promise. Day 28. When Dolores came back from that expedition the other day, she had a tiny scratch on her leg. It didn't seem serious at the time, but right now it's quite a terrible sight. If we don't do anything about it, losing one leg will be a minor inconvenience in comparison to what might happen next. Well, good thing we have the axe, and thank goodness that the medkit wasn't switched around and we had a medkit, or else we would have to use the medkit just like when we gave those refugees the medkit. It actually wasn't even that bad though because, you know, they gave us a radio. But let's see what happened here. If there was one thing we could never consider, it would be cutting off any part of Dolores with an axe. Then why did you even give me the option? 
Not only would she object to this, she would probably take matters and the action to her own hands. It was in our best interest to avoid such a situation. We did use the heated axe blade to clean her wounds, and the infection seems to be fading away. Okay, that's good. So everything works out in the end, except the axe is gone. And more random notes again. Day 31. If there's one way to get our attention, it's definitely banging on our shelter door. Whoever it is, they're quite persistent. They've been at it for the past five minutes. Should we open? Oh, goodness, guys. I... Oh, man. I mean, we can't even say no. Why am I even trying to contemplate opening the door? We have to. All we can do now is clench our hands and clench our butt cheeks that we don't die. And nobody died. Yeah, buddy. A group of travelers wearing gas masks and carrying a serious looking equipment gave us purified water. Before we could thank them, they turned away and left, and they gave us two waters. Wow! Those are the nicest people ever. Wow, I love that. And Ted brought back one food, two waters, and that's it. Why do you guys keep bringing back food? Bring back, like, a med kit or, I don't know, something useful. But whatever. I'm gonna feed Ted just because he looks like absolute shite. Prepare to scavenge again. And what's that sound? Oh no! Something or someone is below us! It's only reasonable to go and check it out. How about using that manhole in the corner? Aw, oh, fuck the manhole one?! Somebody's gonna get hurt! I think it's Ted. Because when you- You guys heard that, right? It sounded like a hot fart? No. That was like the underground crocodile or something like that. If we didn't have that flashlight, we'd probably be a meal for... For something that was down there. We're not sure, but its eyes look very reptilian. Very vicious and very, very hungry. Was that a dinosaur? A dinosaur, really? They're extinct, you dumbasses. Timmy's hungry. Ted's hungry. Dolores is thirsty. Hey, thirsty ass. And this is a good day to go outside, stretch a bit, get some fresh air. Oh, nobody can even go outside? Okay, so never mind then. Day 34. We received another army transmission this morning. We wish it would mark the end of our stay in the shelter, but it seems the military has other plans. All survivors in the area were asked to head to a nearby park and chop down as many trees as possible to aid the evacuation effort, whatever that means. We may as well join in and speed this whole affair up, but I don't have an axe, so I need to get another axe in my possession so we can get the military ending. Or we just need the twins to come and uh, rescue us already. But Ted doesn't seem like he's doing well. I don't know, somebody was coughing earlier and it kind of just distracted me. But let's give them that. And let's send someone out because Timmy can go outside. And more random notes. Damn it, Ted! I knew it. I knew you were gonna die, man. You didn't have the balls to live. You hear me? You hear me from the other world? You didn't have the balls to live, Ted! Damn it! Okay, we're not certain about the situation on the surface. The trip could be risky, but we could really use the supplies. Okay, reading this, if you guys are playing this game, reading the top before you send someone out to scavenge is a good idea to know if they're coming back or not. So it seems pretty safe, so we'll prepare to scavenge. And we have a situation on our hands. There's a group approaching our shelter, and they don't seem like the occasional friendly scavengers you run into. Not at all. They look like they're out for blood. Or cans. Probably cans. This is a terrible time for humanity if canned soup is enough to turn us into monsters. Anyway, we need to defend ourselves! Put the padlock on, and go, HA! You can't even get us! Your pussy ass can't even break through a small ass padlock? You're pathetic! We didn't think that a small padlock would stop them, but it turned out to be enough to discourage the unknown attackers. It seems that they gave the whole break in a fair shot, but ultimately gave up and left. Too bad that padlock is in no shape to be used again. We need to think of other ways to fight at the bandits and other soup-hungry barbarians. Yes, we do, because all we have left to defend ourselves is the gun, and that's only one more time we can defend ourselves, so we need to find something quick. I'm gonna send out Timmy. He is not gonna bring anything. So hopefully he can do his best solid snake impersonation and sneak his way through and get some supplies. Day 39. When we heard a knock on the door this morning, we held our breath in fear, but we soon heard children's voices coming from outside. We decided to open it up. It turned out the voices belonged to a pair of Girl Scouts. They used to sell cookies, but they have branched out and now they offer other items too. Smart girls. They offer the poison for the suitcase and a med kit for the Boy Scout book? No. No, Girl Scouts, no. Don't, no. Don't, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Why you do this to me? Ah, uh, at least we have a med kit. Look on the bright side. <sighs> and more random notes. That sucks so bad. 
that trade was complete rape. A Boy Scout book so valuable for a med kit. I know some people are like, hey Jay, that's actually pretty fair. It is, but I don't need a med kit right now. There's no reason for that, but I do need the Boy Scout book. And the trash can is becoming full of empty soup, but I don't even have anything to fix it. Like, if you guys asked me what is, or what are, my top three items that I would always bring to the shelter. Oh wait, Dolores is sick! So maybe the med kit was good after all. So let's give her that. Okay. Oh, I guess we made a good trade. This dreadful sense is becoming boring, and like every happy model family, we don't have that many things to talk about. Is there anything we can do about that? Anything at all? Yes, let's use the radio. And like I was saying earlier, the top three things that I would bring. Boy Scout book for sure. Radio. And I guess the med kit, yeah, so Boy Scout book, radio, and med kit. And that's not even counting water and food, because those are the essentials. But let's see what Timmy brought back for food. And that's it. Thank you, Timmy, for wasting my damn time. During the night, we heard some suspicious sounds coming from behind our door. When we peeked out in the morning, we saw a leather suitcase. It has no address or name on it, but we're pretty sure it's meant for us. Should we open it? Yes. And back to what I was saying earlier. Remember how I said if we kill those old people, then the twins wouldn't rescue us? <laughs> we have no twin scenario that has popped up since then. I was right. And nobody can scavenge, so we're not gonna do that. And the military is communicating again, but we don't even have an axe. So we definitely need to get an axe in our possession. Day 46. So this is what it's come down to. Sitting idly in the shelter with very few supplies and a growing sense of impending doom. If only there was something we could do about it, like breaking into our neighbor's shelter. We know the lock is broken and we saw her restocking the shelter before the bomb fell. Should we go and check it out? She and her children probably didn't even make it there, right? Well, even still, raiding the shelter would be a good idea. If they don't have food, then we just eat the women and the children and that would be enough. But hopefully we get some supplies from that. And we got four food? I have too much food already, I'm like a damn grocery store. And this is a good day to go outside, stretch a bit, get some fresh air. Yes, Dolores and the gun. Because I don't know if raiders are going to be outside. She's definitely going to need the gun to protect herself. But if the raiders come and try to bang on the door, Timmy has no, like, defense. This is going to suck. Hopefully we don't run into that problem. Day 49. We were about to finish our dinner, if you can call it that, when we heard someone knocking on the door. It seems to be a trader who is very interested in ammunition. How about that? Well, I don't have ammo, but I have a checkerboard, so hopefully you like that instead. <laughs> and they're laughing at me. Why are you guys laughing at me? What did I do? And we offer checkers instead of ammo, and they laugh because we are dumb as hell. Let's give it to me that. And more random notes. Okay, Dolores is back. I don't think she brought back anything, though. She brought back the gun and ammo, and that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for bringing back the same things that we had before you even left. One thing you don't expect is a band of people all dressed in green showing up at your doorstep and claiming they take from the rich and give to the poor. That's exactly what happened to us. Should we let those clowns in? They might provide some quality entertainment. Oh god. This is what happened to us last time and they took everything that we had because apparently we were rich. And apparently they gave us another med kit I think. Yeah boy! That's what I'm talking about! And we can't send anybody out, but we definitely need an axe because we need to get rescued from the military. If we can get our hands on an axe, then I have a good feeling about this. But until then, things are not looking that good for us, ladies and gentlemen. Let's prepare to scavenge. And see, the military scenario again, but we still don't have an axe. Day 56. We could really use some more supplies. We counted all of them today and the numbers did not make us happy. Time to do something about it. We know that a teacher from the local school managed to rescue a bunch of kids and lead them to a nearby building where they're relatively safe. We could really use whatever they have. We could really use it, right? Damn, we are like serial killers at this point. First we went for some old people, then we went for our neighbors, and now we're going for teachers and children? What kind of sick fucks are we? And for food again? Fuck! Stop being fat asses and stop getting food, please! For the love of everything that is holy, get something else besides food. From those past three trips, you've gotten 12 total cans of food. Isn't that enough, you lard asses? Day 58. Bandits are at the door, promising us the worst fate we can imagine if we don't let them in. It's time to make a stand or surrender. Use the gun, son. 
Nobody is taking the ginger bunker without us putting up a fight. And we lost the gun, but we're still alive. That's all that matters. And we lost the ammo, lost the gun. Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Oh boy. And we can't send anybody out yet because these guys are still sad or they're tired or something. I still don't know why you can't send people out if they're not like crazy or depressed. But maybe they are depressed. I mean, they look pretty sad. We've survived 60 days here. I'd be sad as hell too. And let's just prepare again. And more random notes. Day 62. All hands on deck. There are people on the other side of the door, and they don't seem too friendly. In fact, they promised us a painful death at least 17 times already, and it's only been five minutes since they arrived. We better prepare. They'll be forcing that door open any minute now. Well, looks like this is the end of our first run of the no. Oh, Timmy. What happened to Timmy? We watched helplessly as those cruel thugs took Timmy out the shelter. We hope we'll see him again someday. If there's one thing we need, it's water for Dolores. Dolores wants water after she just watched her kid get snatched up by raiders. What a savage. And nobody can do anything about this one. So I don't know if I should redo this or if I should just keep going and then by some weird twist of fate, I get rescued. I doubt it. But we are just going to try to make things happen. So let's just prepare to scavenge again. And the military wants me to chop down a tree with axe. But I don't have it, military. Please, something else. I beg you. Day 66. A band of raiders are at our doorstep. They demand we let them in. There is no game. We either yield or we fight back. There's no middle ground here. Well, Dolores, it was nice knowing you. Thank you for playing. But you are dead. And for some reason, the game froze. That was weird. Okay, and now the game decided it doesn't want to play anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to try this challenge again. Obviously, there was no way. I mean, there's probably like a 5% chance that we would have gotten rescued anyway. I know a good strategy. I'm going to get the right items. Hopefully, we get the right scenarios. So let's do this. All right, guys, we are back. It took us a long time. The military and the twins haven't really popped up in terms of scenarios to try to get rescued. I think it's because we always kill the people. Like, we always have to say yes to killing people around the town. That's why there's a handprint, a bloody handprint. And... I don't know. I feel like that has an effect on if you get a good ending or not. But it says that we need medical supplies and we got to turn this bug spray into it. I say yes. I mean, I can't even say no because we got to say yes to everything. But I really do feel that killing like the neighbors or the teachers and the kids or the old people really do play a big part in if you get rescued or not. Don't quote me on that. I just have this gut feeling that the developers did that. Bandits are at the door promising us the worst fate we can imagine if we don't let them in. It's time we make a stand or surrender. We are never going to surrender because we got a padlock, baby. Day 64. The army started broadcasting again. They're requesting a representative from all survivor groups to meet them at a specified location nearby. Seems they wish to question people before they evacuate us from the area. We're not sure if this is good or bad. We should send someone, though. It's still our best chance. Yes, send Dolores. She is the cute out of the three maybe she can strut her stuff and the army's gonna be like damn girl i gotta rescue that ass day 66 all hands on deck there are people on the other side of the door and they don't seem too friendly in fact they promised us a painful death at least 17 times already and it's only been five minutes since they arrived we better prepare they'll be forcing that door open any minute now oh my god all we have left is the gun if they come back again we are so screwed so hopefully we can get rescued from the military before the raiders come back again now i'm extremely nervous because i don't know if the raiders are going to come back or wait 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 we heard a knock on the door this morning we held our breath in fear but we soon heard children's voices coming from outside it's the girl scouts yes they offer the gun for the gas mask and they offer the padlock for the checkerboard okay good so we got to choose the checkerboard and we're good so if another bandit scenario comes out at least we have the padlock to save our asses yes day 69 all hands on deck there are people on the other side of the door and they don't seem too friendly what the hell it's only been like a day or two and they're coming back already we got the padlock hopefully more girl scouts come and like trade us more items because that would be really awesome because we really need to save our asses right now we're popular around the raider slash bandit community apparently they want us really bad i don't know why we don't have that many good things and the damage rifle hanging from here makes us feel unsafe maybe we should fix it oh my god somebody out there wants us to survive 
Thank you, 60 Second Gods. Thank you. We now have another tool to save us from the raiders. I bet you it's gonna be a raider thing. Watch. Nope. No, it's just random notes. Oh, that's a surprise. And they're back. It's only day 72. They're banging on the door. They want us to surrender. No, we are not gonna go. We're gonna get that gun, and we're just gonna go baboosh! Baboosh! And you, too? Okay, baboosh! Day 73. Poor Dolores is in bad shape. Is there anything we could do for her? Yeah, she's in bad shape. Let's use the med kit. The only thing that we can use to help us all survive. Let's use it on her little boo-boos. Fuck you, Dolores. Why you always gotta be pampered? And we woke up to the sound of banging our door. Someone has been at it like there's no tomorrow. In a manner of speaking, that might be true. Shall we open the door? Uh, usually when there's a good ending, there's like some kind of drawing or a picture of like some kind of happy family and like housing and something. I don't know if this is the military or the raiders, but we are just gonna hope that it's the military. Yes! It's the military! Fuck yeah! Woo! High five, guys! We did it! We waited for a long time for this moment. Words can't express how we felt when we saw those soldiers enter our humble shelter. We're safe. Finally safe. What will tomorrow bring? We don't know, but it's sure gonna be better than this. We held out for 75 days, and I'm gonna hold my hand in the air like I just don't care. Yeah, baby! We did it! After four tries, four episodes, so many endings, so many disappointments, we finally beat the yes to everything challenge. <laughs> and I'm so happy. I'm so happy, guys. That was an amazing challenge. All four episodes, and to finally beat it, it just feels so rewarding. I love it. Thank you guys for tuning in to that series. A million views on the Yes Challenge video. That was amazing. Thank you guys so much for all the support. If you guys have any more cool recommendations for challenges that you want me to try, make sure you guys leave them in the comments below. But if you guys enjoyed this video, though, please give it a like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!